The four quarterbacks who won in the divisional round of the NFL playoffs all had one thing in common. They played with poise. So what does it mean to have poise on the football field? But more importantly, what does it look like to remain calm, confident, and poised in our own lives? Let's unpack it. This is the Unpacking It Podcast, where we relate big sports stories to life and biblical truth. Our mission is to challenge, encourage, and inspire you to follow Jesus and become more like him with sports conversations that truly matter. That's what I'm talking about! Coming to you from Charlotte, North Carolina. Hey, I just want to thank you guys one last time for being here. It's the best day ever. Here is the president of Unpacking It Ministries, Bryce Johnson. Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast, where we unpack parallels, metaphors, and topics in sports that relate to life and faith. I'm Bryce Johnson, joined by my co-host, Luke Heaton, on today's episode. We are unpacking the NFL playoffs and the importance of quarterbacks having poise. Thanks to everybody listening to this show as a podcast on Apple Spotify, you name it. And those of you that are watching on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, we are so thrilled to have you a part of today's show. Also, we are excited to announce you can hear and watch this show on Fig Tree TV. That's right. It's a channel where faith and family meet, and we are excited to join the Fig Tree TV family and, and so glad uh, that you now have access uh, to this show on another platform. And so wherever you are, are listening today, we appreciate you checking this show out and, 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 and always enjoy hearing from you. So you can email me, Bryce, at unpackingit.com or leave comments wherever you are watching or listening. Please rate, review, and share as well. And you can always visit our website, Unpacking It. Dot com. This show is brought to you by Sugar Creek Coffee. SugarCreekCoffee.com. Use the promo code UNPACK at Sugar Creek Coffee Roasters. They specialize in handcrafted small batch artesian roasted coffee. They have a passion for coffee, a love for people. We love the coffee. We love people. And so we're, we're thrilled to partner with Sugar Creek. And they don't even roast until you actually place an order. And so you can go to their website, sugarcreekcoffee.com, order, use the promo code UNPACK, and, and when you do, you can be assured the freshest roasted coffee is delivered to your door. So thanks so much to Sugar Creek Coffee. All right, so here we are. This is the, the new version, the new format of the Unpacking It podcast, and we are going to jump right into today's topic, which is, is based on one of our devotionals. Uh, and so we send this out through email Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you can subscribe to our Unpacking It devotional by going to unpackingit.com. And of course, it is the NFL playoffs taking place right now in the sports world. It has everybody's attention. I saw the, the Jacksonville, Kansas City game from Saturday night. Huge audience. And that was probably maybe the least interesting game heading into the, the weekend, but all four were great. And so today I welcome on Luke Heaton and we are going to talk quarterbacks, Luke, because let's face it, the NFL is built around quarterbacks and there are so many characteristics about quarterbacks that, that you can pull from and that we can parallel to our own lives. But today we're going to focus on the word poised. And, and how quarterbacks need to have poise when leading their team. And all four of these quarterbacks that won over the weekend had poise. And, and so, Luke, why don't you, you jump in right away. And, and when we think about maybe the best quarterback this season, who could end up winning the MVP, it's Jalen Hurts. But what did he have to overcome in, in order to you know, lead his team to victory, but also remain calm and, and, and have the type of poise needed to, to get the win. Well, gosh, I mean, I first think of what it's like to play with injury. I mean, he's mm. been, I mean, he said prior to the, their playoff game against the giants, I'm not a hundred percent. 
a, a shoulder injury on your throwing shoulder? Because think of how often he runs the ball. He's a threat with his legs, potentially landing on his shoulder, throwing deep balls. I mean, he has he's thrown a ton of long touchdown passes. It'd be easy to second guess yourself, to be in your head, but how calm he is throughout entire football games, it's impressive. For how young he is as well, It's it's been very impressive to watch. And I would also say his poise has been on display since he was a college quarterback mm -hmm. at Alabama, at Oklahoma, and, and all that he's kind of been through as a football player, he, he's just been that, that steady force uh, when he's out there, and, and he's so you know, just so reliable because of that. And, and also, as we look at the other quarterbacks that, that, that won, you know, the, the one quarterback that, that really got me going on this topic is Brock Purdy because this story is fascinating to think you know, rookie quarterback takes over and, and really he's been part of the, the role that, that the 49ers have been on. He's won seven straight. They've won a few more before that. And, and for him to come in, and establish himself with his teammates where they trust him. And, and I, I read the, the different quotes from, you know, whether it's uh, Fred Warner who was talking about Brock Purdy's poise or, or you think about what uh, George Kittle said. He, he wrote uh, or he said this. He says, confident the whole time. It was awesome. I thought Brock did really well, especially when our offense wasn't doing well early. Brock wasn't getting distraught. There was no like jittery, jittery, jitteriness to him. <laughs> That's hard to say. He was just Brock Purdy walking in the huddle, calling the play and delivering. And so when you think about Brock Purdy, uh, this stage, and he's already won two playoff games. Yeah. And, and, and the big test for him, though, will be going on the road to Philly. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different. But, but so far through seven games and two playoff games, he has shown tremendous poise. Tremendous poise, and that's what Shanahan has said. I mean, he's talked about this is arguably one of the most poised rookies I've ever coached. It, it's amazing. He has yet to lose. I mean, we're seeing flashes of, is this the next Ben Roethlisberger being a starter and then not losing until many games later? But, uh, yeah, it's his, his demeanor in interviews, his demeanor on the field, in the huddle, he doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. He knows what he's supposed to do. It's it's remarkable. So the Niners are rolling, and I mean they couldn't have. I mean this is their third string quarterback. They couldn't have asked for a better third string. Oh, I mean this is you don't see this. The poise from a rookie who is the la was the last pick in the draft was he Mister right. Irrelevant? I mean this is oh, yeah. amazing. And 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 really what I you know appreciate uh, about him is. He, he's in you know, uncharted territory as a rookie and then being in the playoffs, yet he still has that level of confidence that he can do what needs to be done. And there were, there were times, I know you're a Cowboys fan, so you didn't always uh, like how well he, he played, but there were key times where he had to make the big throw. And, of course, George Kittle helped on the, on the, the amazing catch that, that will go down in uh, NFL history as, as, as a memorable one. Um, but Purdy made the, made the key throws. It, it wasn't a, they didn't put a lot on him, but what they asked him to do, he remained calm, confident, and, and poised. All right, let's talk about the other, the other quarterbacks that, that won over the weekend. And, and when you talk about Joe Burrow, to think oh. what he had to do, he had to go into Buffalo, a hostile environment, in the middle of a snowstorm. Yeah. And, and, and also in the middle of, you know, they were a part of, the, the 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 Hamler situation, uh, you know they 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 were the the home team. The game gets canceled, so they have been associated with with the entire story, and um, Demar Hamlin, and 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 so for Burrow to to remain calm through all of that, mm -hmm. and then to show up with a decimated offensive line, which was yeah. the big story going in, and then what do we know him to be? Joe Cool. That's what he was on Sunday. It's the thing of even the, the greater context of this. Yes. So his whole career struggling offensive line, then you're going yeah to Buffalo who is a very good defense and you're missing three starters. Let's also flash back to the really bad knee injury 
Burrow got early in his career. That's right. And yet he still stands tall and strong in the pocket and doesn't panic. His ability to wait until it's absolutely necessary to break the pocket, I don't, I don't know how you do it. If I felt a twinge <laughs> of pressure, I'm sprinting out of the pocket. And yet he's, his ability to do it and stay calm and just deliver passes all game long, yeah, it's, I mean, there's a reason number one overall, there's a reason he's a franchise quarterback. And, and there is a difference between quarterbacks that are, that are cool. Like, and, and not cool. Is Joe Burrow cool? Eh, I don't know if he's cool. He's got like, swag. He's got swag. There's, there, there's, a, there's some of that. But, it, but it, to me, it, it speaks more to his coolness in the pocket, like you were talking about, his coolness as a, as a leader. And to, to think, too, that this Bengals franchise has been totally turned around by him. Yeah. And, and Zach Taylor deserves some, some credit for sure. But, but Joe Burrow, it, he's, he's been that stabilizing force. And when he's out there, the, the, the confidence for the whole team rises mm -hmm. because he has that confidence in himself and, and his ability to, to get the job done, um, which he continues to do back in the AFC championship game. And now they go up against the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, and, and Patrick Mahomes. He was tested on Saturday <laughs> night, and his was more injury-related, major ankle injury. He's playing on one leg. You could see him playing yeah. on one leg. He was trying to hand off the ball with one leg. And, and the word that comes to mind, too, along with the word poised, is gutsy. And, and so th th they're very similar. But Mahomes, he was able to stay out there and, and, and play through the, the pain. And he wasn't rattled. He wasn't, you know, he, I like the word, he was unflappable in, in the midst of, <laughs> of the injury. And, and knowing that down after down, he's having to, to be limited. Yet, hey, the composure was there. He was still calm. And, and, and yeah. also the Chiefs remained calm, too, uh, with their guy out there. Yeah. Their leader. <laughs> Chad Henney stepping in. And another playoff performance from Chad Henney, which is, which is amazing. And he was poised, too, actually. Yeah. We'll get him a little so, uh, part fun, of the uh, Fun trivia. He, I think Chad Henney now has the longest touchdown drive in Chiefs playoff history when he came in. They were pinned back deep. The yard line, but um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Think of poise as a as a right-handed quarterback. Your uh, your right ankle uh, is sprained. That's your plant foot. So now he's throwing only arm, and then also consider if anyone like if you have a hurt ankle, if anyone comes near that ankle and is about to bump it, hey, well, hey, he's easy hurt ankle, and yet he's standing in the pocket and delivering passes. And then those handoffs, he's having to sprint to be able to handle it's, it's yeah, it was amazing. I don't know how he did it. Special player, he he really is. So all four of these quarterbacks, you you see the 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 thread and and that common trait of they each had their kind of unique difficulty or you know struggle or challenge. And Brock Purdy's a rookie, and Jalen Hurts coming off an injury and. The, you know, the, the, the Chiefs and Mahomes dealing with a, a current <laughs> injury. Um, and, and so all of these guys uh, demonstrated a, a tremendous uh, amount of, of poise. And so as we relate this to life and, and biblical truth, I, I just want to ask us to, to consider our own lives and do we have poise? And, and what does it look like to actually you know, represent calmness, composure in our own lives? And when we face adversity, do we remain cool? And do we stay under control? When, when the, you know, the, the storm, Joe Burrow had a, a winter storm, a snowstorm coming down. It was crazy. You could barely see anything. Yet, yet he remained cool. And so when we find ourselves in, in those situations in life, how do we respond? And, and when we're under pressure, Think about the pressure that these, these quarterbacks are, are feeling, yet remaining calm, keeping their composure. And, and when we deal with you know, an, an injury or uh, you know, sickness, illness, limitations, or, or we're in a, a hostile environment, are, are we steady? Are we unflappable? And, and so we, we evaluate that in our own lives. But then we have to consider, okay, if, if I am, great. Why is that? What, what is allowing me to have that kind of poise. And if not, 
what, how do I get there? And, and so we, we always want to begin with, all right, we, we can't do this in our own strength. And, and it's one thing, a quarterback, all right, maybe you can have some poise on the field. But when we're talking about real, consistent, deep-rooted, kind of you know, soul level, heart level, that, that when, we, when we go there, where God gives us the strength, the ability, the power, the, the peace that you know, only can come from him, then out of that, our reliance on him, we become under control, composed, mm-hmm. cool, poised in, in the midst of, uh, of difficulty. And, and so um, why don't you, Luke, if, if you want to read uh, a couple of different verses here, we'll, we'll start with Isaiah 43, 1 and 2, as, as God tells his, his people what? Yeah, it says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Man. So, so really encouraging. Actually, as I was driving in today, heard a song on the radio uh, about there, there's another in the fire, and, and, and there's, there, there's someone else holding up the, up the, up the waves. Um, and, and you know, speaking to God being with us in the midst of whatever we're facing. And, and so how, how do we handle difficult situations with poise, confidence, and self-control? Well, we focus on the reality that God is with us and empowering us. He's allowing us to, to get through uh, these situations, but, but not just get through them, but get through them with the right attitude and the right mindset and the right uh, posture uh, through that. And, and yeah. so... Go ahead. Well, and, well, and the I think the important reminder that I see here is, I mean, the first phrase, "Fear not, for I have redeemed you." I mean, this this is almost a reminder on God reminding them, "Look what I've done for you in the past. Mm. Remember my faithfulness to you." I mean, that's the lack of that is a huge reason for what took place in the Book of Judges when everyone did what they thought they should do. Everyone was going their own way because the next generation of Israelites did not hear about the things of God. And to to think of how we are able to stay poised in life in varying circumstances, environment, situations that are difficult, a a key factor to staying poised is remembering God's faithfulness in previous circumstances and situations and environments that are either repeating themselves or are similar. So when we're going through something, we can remember and recall how God's already shown up in our life in the scriptures and just in our own experience. And hey, you know what? I can have poise here. Or to think of the experience that Mahomes and Burrow have had in playoff situations. They can be poised. They've played big games, especially Mahomes. I mean, this is fifth straight conference championship game. He's been here. He has every reason to be poised and not panic. So it's important to recall our experiences of God's faithfulness. And then we also want to remember what it says in 2 Timothy 1.7, Amplified Version, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. So that's that's the result. The poise is the result of you know, what, what you were talking about is re- recalling God's faithfulness. It's relying on his power. That power is not a power of timidity. No, it's a power uh, of strength and love and sound judgment and personal discipline. And, and so that's what we have uh, available to us. And so we can remain confident because God is in us, with us, and, and, and empowering us. And, and so Things are going to pop up. Hurdles are going to pop up. Difficulties are going to pop up. We know this. This is this is part of the journey of life that we're on, and it's it's why we continue to do unpacking it because we want to walk alongside each other through this journey to remind each other, hey, let's keep going, let's endure, and 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 we can get through this. God is with us. God is faithful. God is good. God is loving, and and so we're not you know we're not alone in this, and and and. When we reflect on those things, 
and we tap into that power, the result will be this calmness, this poise, this yep. coolness. And, yep. and so when, when, when you think about, you know, maybe people that represent that or, or how you've been encouraged uh, in your own life to kind of have that, that type of poise, what, what are some things that, that, that come to mind? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we have the Unpacked Lunch every Wednesday, which is sports fans across the country uh, coming together for a, a lunchtime to be able to talk sports, talk how they relate to faith. It's really encouraging. And you and I have gotten the chance to know one of the guys that's come consistently for at least a year. I mean, before I started uh, attending the lunches. And he's he's had a, a difficult past year or two years with uh, just uh, one of his sons just having an illness and doctor visits and not sure if his son's going to get better or not, and to see his poise. Because, I mean, he's, he's, he's sharing these things, and these are really difficult. It's a really difficult circumstance as a father to, to see his, his young son dealing with this illness, but to see that his hope in the truth of the gospel, his hope in trusting that God's going to take care of him despite this really difficult unknown he was poised in his mm. in his how he spoke, how he was navigating the situation. That was an encouragement to me. Um, so that that's an example that you and I have both gotten to really see, which is really encouraging. I, I love it. And and as we we think about yeah, Kaz, we'll give a shout out to Kaz. He's he's uh, he's he's been a, a great example to us. And, and as we we think back to kind of the the, the quarterbacks, we can see a difference in the quarterbacks that continue to have poise. And what's so interesting is I would say for the majority of Tom Brady's career, he's shown poise in big moments. But this year, he looked rattled mm -hmm. and, and, and struggled at times. And it was very uncharacteristic where he's throwing his tablet. And, and we know that he you know, had a lot going on off the field and, and a lot going on. And things seem to kind of be ending in, in Tampa Bay. But there's a difference even in looking at him. Poised, not poised, throwing the tablet, yelling at his, you know, his teammates, all that kind of thing. Yeah. And then when we, when we you know, compare it to, okay, who are the four quarterbacks remaining? Well, we pulled examples of all four of these guys representing poise and calmness. And so when it comes to our lives as followers of Jesus, people should be able to look to us and see a difference to say, uh, how is Bryce able to have poise? How, how is Kaz able to have poise? How does Luke have, have poise in the midst of the struggle, the difficulty, the challenge, the hostile environment that they find themselves in, how do they do that? And, and so we, we point to you know, where our hope is, where our faith is, where our trust is, the power within us. And, and so that's, that's, at the, that's at the core. Uh, and so we have to have a, 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 you know, a soul and a heart that is connected with the Lord and, and fully reliant on him. But, but Luke, I also want to get, not but, but and, I want to I want to leave our our listeners today too with you know just some practical ways as well that that mm -hmm. complement the you know the, the the soul at peace yeah. the reliance on the power of the Holy Spirit within us but there are also disciplines that uh, that, that cultivate and encourage yeah. a a representation of poise and calmness because these quarterbacks their poise is not a fluke their preparation is a, a significant contributing factor to their poise. That's right. And in the same way in our own lives, there are, like you said, self-disciplines, ways we can prepare. Of course, it's ultimately through the power of the Holy Spirit, through God's grace toward us. But there's still uh, God calling us to, to these self-disciplines and to step up to the plate and, and submit to the power of His Spirit and live and walk with the power of His Spirit. Um, you know what I think of one is, and I know this you this is something you really love is mentorship, um, and I think of again we talked about Kyle Shanahan's role in Purdy's poise. I mean Shanahan's uh, his encouragement, his confidence that he's publicly placing in Purdy, no doubt behind the scenes in the locker room, that can be likened to a, a mentorship role in our own life where there's someone who's gone before us. Kyle Shanahan has great experience. Coach's son, great experience coaching himself. He's seen it all. Tough losses, amazing wins. 
he's able to speak into Purdy in the same way that someone who's gone before us in their own life can speak into us, which I know you love because you've, from me learning from your example, you always surround yourself with mentor figures. Definitely. Absolutely. And that keeps me poised because there are, there are times where I'll, I'll sit down at, at lunch with my mentor, Calvin, and I'm a little panicked. I'm struggling. And, and then I can leave with, with more poise and calmness after he's spoken truth to me and reminded me of, of biblical truth. And, and so you're right. Mentors are, are going to be key with that. And then also, you know, we've got to memorize scripture ourselves and we've got to know what the truth is. And, and we, you know, like, like the verses we, we mentioned earlier, uh, I'll even add, uh, this is something David writes, Psalm 27, three, though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. Um, and so it's, it's those types of verses that, that I will remain confident. I, my, my confidence is in the Lord and, and those, those things that we have to, you know, it's, it's that, it, self-talk to a certain extent, but just, it's just remember, bring the Holy spirit, bringing verses to mind, but we have to have read those verses and memorize those verses mm -hmm. so that they're, they're, they're easily uh, brought, brought to mind and, and uh, available to us. Um, and then you know, the other thing, when you think about these, these quarterbacks is they also have to keep the right perspective and they have to remind themselves, this is, it's a football game. So it's not, it's not the end of the world. It, it's the foot. It's a football game. And remind themselves, all right, we are prepared. We've got a game plan. I'm confident mm -hmm. and I've got the skills to be able to go out and, and, and do this. And, and so we, for us as followers of Jesus, we, re we remember the perspective of God's equipped me, God is with us. And I've got to keep that, that perspective. I've got this power available to me. Yep. Um, and so when we view our challenges through the right lens, then we're able to, to, to keep that, that composure. Yep. And um, the, adding to that the perspective of not only do we have the power by the power of the Holy Spirit and God's grace and goodness to us, we also have the thing that is most important, that if we lose everything, but we still have Jesus, we still have relationship with God through his son, we've got it all. So no matter how difficult, and it's, of course, difficult to really trust these things in the midst of a really difficult season— but it's still true, and it takes preparation of preaching the gospel to yourself daily, weekly, all the time, reflecting on the truth that I could lose everything and still have Jesus, and I've got, and I've got everything I need. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. And, and then the, the, the one other thing that these quarterbacks do, it, it also, also to stay poised and calm, is they depend on their teammates. And, and they look in the huddle, and they go, all right, man, I know this guy's got my back. I know he's blocking for me. I know he's 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 going to get open, and and so we have to surround ourselves also with teammates that that are going to you know, lift us up, build us up, point us the right direction, be there for us, carry the burdens with us, and and so that's that's going to be important for us to to keep keep our composure as well. Yeah, because think <laughs> Brock Purdy. I mean, who better do you want at left tackle than Trent Williams, who's <laughs> arguably the best right. lineman in the NFL this year, even though he's old? To think that that guy's protecting your blind side. I mean, come on. I can have poise. It helps. Get, everybody needs a Trent Williams in their life. <laughs> that left tackle. Got to take care of that left tackle. You better. You better have that Kyle Shanahan in your, in your ear as well. Um, so as we, uh, as we wrap things up today, just a couple you know, questions to consider. You know, what, what spiritual disciplines do, do we need to uh, implement in, in order to facilitate and, and cultivate poise in, in our lives? Um, have we addressed our, our soul issue and are we at peace uh, in a deep-rooted way, knowing that eternity is secure in, in Christ, our identity is in Christ? Uh, that gives us that, that, that deep peace that, that results in poise. Um, and then also, who, you know, who are the people that you really admire, that, that you can think to and, and see examples of, of poise? And, and those, the view that, those people that you can ask, how, how do you do it? How do you remain so calm, uh, learning from them? And, and so this is the final kind of challenge and encouragement. Just like an NFL quarterback, he tests and hurdles, or they come their way. But when they do, uh, in our own lives, uh, you know, just like a quarterback faces those things, let's remain cool with poise and confidence because blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. And so that's Jeremiah 17, seven blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. And, and so 
last thing is as we we wrap this up as well you know what's the one thing that that you're packing up to unpack later what what's your what's your big takeaway uh from this and we encourage you to you know write it down and and send us an email as well let us know what, what what's the one big takeaway uh we'd love to hear from you so you can email me bryce at unpacking it.com uh also encourage you to uh rate review and share this is a, a kind of a new format for us with this show would love your feedback so please uh let us know and uh we greatly appreciate it luke what's your big takeaway today big takeaway is to have an intentional week or next couple weeks of of really fine-tuning spiritual disciplines it's still early in the new year it's still a great time to to establish some new rhythms i love it i want to be someone that people can look to and say man he's got poise he's got poise because i look at these four quarterbacks and i go man brock purdy he's young but he's got poise Patrick Mahomes, he's injured. He's got poise. Yep. Joe Burrow doesn't have an offensive line as, as good as others. Hey, he's still poised. Bryce um, Johnson, he's got another cold. Still poised, though. <laughs> still poised. Still got the tickle in the throat. It's always there. It never goes away. I got to remain poised. But great stuff from, from Lou Keaton. Uh, appreciate all of your uh, hard work and, and insight today. I'm Bryce Johnson. I'm a sports fan who follows Jesus. I believe in the good news that he died on the cross for my sin. He was resurrected, and through faith, I've been saved by his grace. I hope that is true for you as well, and I hope you'll join me as we live life as sports fans who follow Jesus together. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for joining us right here on the Unpacking It podcast. Unpacking It podcast.